Well, it's interesting in a sense because I mean, one of the things about the differences between, say, visual art and, and theatre very often, or, or plays, is that is that relationship between how it can be reinterpreted, what what its porousness is. That's the word we've we've, we've used a lot. And I was thinking about that with thirty pieces of silver. Is it installation? Is it sculpture? Its edges are quite porous. All all sculptural work now is. So it has a very different feel in any site that it's shown. Whereas you show the yeah. kiss, for instance. Yeah, and I think also I used to make a lot of site specific work. Yeah. Yeah, but yes, now, did, very often, the site now is within the work. Yeah, you know, so an object oh, will have a site in it. You know, so yeah. measuring Niagara as a teaspoon. You know, that drawing mm. has got the site in it, and it's got the object in it. You've um, done, yeah, you've done a piece of work just before um, thirty pieces of silver. You had all this. Um, gosh, where was that in London? Where you had tiny, tiny the cathedrals. The ca- tiny cathedrals. A little lead cathedrals hanging upside down in an archway near mm. London Bridge, and um, the, the arch was dripping natural stalactites. There's all minerals running through the bricks, so mm. the spires got became stalactites really over a year. But it got stolen piece by pe- piece because <laughs> the little lead cathedrals, and, and bit by bit it just yeah. disappeared. But I quite yeah. liked it. And they, somebody said, "Oh, I've got a friend who's got one on her, their mantelpiece." <laughs> but I think can say a little bit more about that because that idea of I mean that's that's something I hadn't really thought about before the the way in which you know you you made quite a lot of site specific work but now the idea of site being inside the work yeah I think so um, you know I mean lots of lots of works I mean I've just done I had a show at the Baltic earlier well, about it was almost, <coughs> almost a year no it's a year mm. ago now anyway ago, um, but yeah. I I got some um, um, fluff from the House of Commons. And, and fluff from the House of Lords from the Hoover bags, and I, I put it, trapped some in the glass slide and projected them on the wall, so you got red and green, you know, the upper and lower houses, and it looked like a painting or something or naval fluff, <laughs> and uh, and it's like noise. By looking at it, it's almost like you could hear the babble of the houses, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my political abstracts, <laughs> um, but uh, but you know, this, that's a sight. You know, that's yes. a sight of two places put in the glass slide and protected. <coughs> I mean, or just, dust and fibres from Freud's cl- yes. couch, or, you know, so that's a site specific piece. The site is Freud's pillow, you know. Yeah. Um, so the site just gets moved around. But well, that really, that, I mean, I really haven't thought about that before. It, it, that, I mean, that very, very much relates to Marcel Duchamp's work, if you ask me. Yes. You think, I mean, there, there's a whole sense in which the large glass, for instance, or Hidden Noise, which yes. is a work. Yes. And Duchamp made this, this piece called Hidden Noise with string, lots of you probably. A ball of string. That with a ball of string. Stuck between, um, almost like a flower press, wasn't it? I, I <laughs> and I think it had a bell or something on the side, <laughs> and you didn't know what the noise was. And it was made never, for... Because you'd have to dismantle and ruin the artwork yeah. to find out what the noise yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, that's a very... that. I mean, he's an artist that you've mentioned several oh, times. And yeah. What's his resonance for you? I mean, well, is he, it in language? Is it in... Well, because he, he was a polymath, and he yeah. played chess, and he cross-dressed, <laughs> not, you know, it wasn't John Cesar or anything, but he, he had an alter ego called Rose, Rose Sullivan, Sullivan. Yeah. and he had obviously a very funny sense of humour, um, but I love uh, one of his early pieces I love very much was called Standard Stoppages, where he took a mm. metre of, of string and he dropped it, and then he made a ruler that reflected that the, cur- the natural curve, so that was still a metre but it was a bit of a wavy metre, mm. you couldn't measure anything else with it, but I, I just love that perversity of taking something that's a measurement and then mm-hmm. making something quite r- ran- random or emotional with it um, I don't know, he, he's a, I think he's a poet as well, I suppose he's somebody he, who worked with language it's and objects and, and I love that, you know mm. and he made op art, you know, he made those rotor reliefs yes. and he you know, John Cage's work's all inspired. He did music it was made up by chance. You know, by you know, he, he's, he's, he's very so iconic of the age huge, in, which we, huge. in which um, we live, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, can I just take a question here? Well, you yeah. sort of mentioned chance. Um, at the Baltic, there was a piece with a, a hymn book. Which oh yes, which was a, which was a beautiful piece. It's a Cage piece. Yeah, was it in, in the Baltic expedition? Yeah, it was, oh, a, of one of mine, yeah. Church, was it your piece? Two, yeah, it was. It was a. Ch- it was a hymn from two different churches. Yeah. One was from the Arson Church, and one was from the yeah. Church mm. Dropped by Lightning. And extremely beautiful, but presumably, in, you were trying to find the church that had been burned, but you didn't know necessarily that those, those objects. No. So that's the chance coming into the world. Well, there's lots of chance in my so work. Do you, do you deliberately try and plan for it? No, well, no, <laughs> uh, no. Yes. I mean, I, I always assume it's almost having the intuition of where to dig. Mm. You know, it's like an archaeologist should say, "Oh, I'm going to dig here because I think there might be something here," but I don't know what it is. And then you start digging. So you have an idea. So the idea is, t- I was just trying to find something struck by lightning, not necessarily a church. I was very happy, you know, <laughs> when the church got struck by lightning. I thought, "Wow, this is great," <laughs> but you know, because but you didn't know. I didn't know what it was going to be. So I just set out. The, just, I just had an idea. I wanted to find things struck by lightning. So I would phone up lightning protection guys, you know, and I got a little network firemen asking them to phone me if anything cropped up. So a fireman phoned me up and said, "Hey, there's a 
church burnt down 13 miles away and I thought great you know I felt like an ambulance chase and running down there but but in a way so I kind of on the lookout I'm always alert I mean when I was working with the cult firearms and they were shooting things through guns for me I didn't know about the Embro firearms I was walking around the factory and they were showing me what they did and I thought wow that's amazing and uh, and so you know so other pieces come out of me just being in in the right place at the right time but you kind of get alert to looking for stuff mm. um so, so it's and also you know the chance thing of me making me me throwing the what, words off the white cliffs of Dover. The chance is what happens to it, but it, but in the end I've set up the whole thing. You know the logic versus the, the random. So I'm always looking for the random and then doing reverse engineering on it almost, <laughs> trying to make sense of it all. I mean, in a way, that's an interesting question that you might want to ask about, about what an artist's process is really. Yeah. I mean, being uh, informed. Uh, uh, having your intuition informed, if you like. Well, it's just, I mean, I always <laughs> think I'm reinventing the wheel every time I make a piece of work because I sort of start off not knowing the hell I'm doing and, you know, kind of going around in circles. But then things emerge and ideas pop up. Um, but really, I've had that idea many times before, but just forgotten it. And it just keeps on reiterating itself because I've, I've got a terrible memory. Um, but then it gets made. And yes. then I kind of make sense of it later it's almost as if back to that thing of, you know that the work has a narrative or an unconscious of itself as you go on and in fact um, i'm just kind of aware in fact that it's already five past two and that we might want to sort of begin to wind down so there are a couple of more things i'd like to ask you but i'd like to kind of really find out whether there are more burning questions or, or questions at all yeah i was wondering about the effect uh, going back to 30 pieces of silver again the effect of having all those objects hung, and I, I watched the video and saw how long it took, and what an enormous uh, work it was to do that, and how different it would be if they weren't. If they weren't hung. Um, I think they'd be like the mortuary then. For me, you know, they'd, they'd be squashed objects, but they would be just I've killed them off and that's it. I didn't resurrect them again. So in a way, by suspending them, I'm reanimating them and giving back their life, but in a different way. Because they're suspended above the floor, almost to, to corresponding to the kind of average volume that they had. Um, so, so um, obviously, the labour for me is very important. It's you know, for anybody who's say carving a piece of stone, all those hundreds of hours of chipping away at the stone, you don't see them, but they've gone on. <laughs> so, in a way, that's it's just visible with my work because you see how much work's gone into it. But every little gesture of all those strokes are. You know, the wires to me is just as important as the things that are suspended on them. You know, they're like a drawing, you know, it's like a kind of visual drawing. So I think for me, uh, um, for somebody else, I might just like them on the floor, but I, I, I like them to be resurrected again. Thank you. <laughs> mm. What current ideas are you working with? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm doing, I'm doing some weird bullet drawings, you know, not like the ones you saw in the picture. I've, I've been stabbing pieces of paper with a a sharp point and then I've been embroidering the paper making kind of crosses with my bullets you know it's almost like a target but um, but they're very I'm not sure what's going on they're just abstracts they're kind of but the back I like mm. very much because mm. you know I mean um, you know the, the back all becomes very chaotic and I quite like the idea of embroidering things perhaps with bullets Is something that's commissioned or? no most of my work isn't commissioned I never make usually any private commissions um, um, but that that um, because I just don't want people to give me content, you know, I want the content. But people say, could you make, do a show, or could you... But these are just, <coughs> I don't know what they're for, but... I mean, there's a lot of embroidering coming into your work, and the nets that you made yes. very recently that... <coughs> oh, yeah, I made all these tents out of nets. And mm. more recently, I've been um, covering those black... They're like black veils, really. Mm. I've been cutting up men's suits and making camouflage nets out of men's suits <coughs> and black um, net, which are kind of weird black mm. kind of tents. Um, they're kind of a bit creepy actually yeah. <laughs>